Former staffers who work for Representative Nancy Mace are spilling the tea about their time working for the South Carolina Republican. As of Monday, according to three sources familiar with the matter, Mace's entire D.C. staff has turned over since November 1st, 2023, nine staffers in the span of a few short months. Only one of them was actually fired. That is now former Chief of Staff Dan Hanlon, who is now running against her for the district. By the way, a lot of the ex-staffers are now working for Hanlon. Ooh, it's so good. <laughs> Nothing like Republican and Republican crime. Gotta love it. Let them fight. Let them fight. Now, here's the thing. A lot of the staffers allege that Mace ran a very toxic work environment. In fact, I shared a previous article. Here's another one, the Daily Beast, where you had one former senior staffer alleging that Mace was abusive and that she had been micromanaging her staff through different uh, electronic mediums, for example, constantly texting them outside of work hours, using Signal or something called Monday.com, which is an unauthorized software system that Mace used in her office. In effect, micromanaging the office all day and night and early morning. One of the staffers said, quote, it was constant. For Mace, it was all about control. She didn't see the staff as people, but property. I would say that's kind of unsurprising for a Republican. Uh, but that's just my bias shining through. Maybe, maybe there are some, uh, you know, Republicans on uh, Capitol Hill that aren't so bad to work for. But generally, eh, <laughs> I've also, to be fair, heard some horror stories about working for Democratic uh, Congress people as well. Uh, Amy Klobuchar throwing staplers at your head, things like that. So let's be fair. Let's be fair about this. Okay, fair and balanced is what we do here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and not, not because I look like Farron Cousins. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get back to the story. Now, another senior staffer had also recalled how Mace called them close to midnight on Christmas Eve and demanded to know why she wasn't getting on television more during the holiday week. That's Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. D is nothing sacred anymore? <laughs> Seriously. Like, no, 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 no. This, this work from home, like, like being able to, you know, contact your employees at all times when they're at home. No, ain't going to fly. Unless you're going to pay me all the time. All right. Uh, hey, pay me per diem. Like, all right. Uh, five bucks a text, right? You're going to text me. You make me work in my off hours. That'll be, that'll be five bucks. All right. Just for every single text. Oh, you want it? You want me to email you back? That's ten, because I gotta go to my computer and, or you know, type some stuff on my phone, in an email format. That'll be ten dollars. I mean, I'm gonna charge him. All right, you want me to work more? You're gonna, you're gonna pay me more, okay? <laughs> or else it's not happening. So, but anyway, that's just me. Now, one staffer said, if she needed us, we had to answer within eight minutes. That was a rule. That was a rule. Okay, uh, the former staffer continued by saying, Nancy is delusional as a boss. She says nothing publicly without her consultants or senior staffers telling her to, but takes credit for everything. She's a walking teleprompter. Wow. Wow. Now, another staffer points out that this is why everybody on Capitol Hill refers to Nancy Mace as just a joke and points out that this is probably why she's only able to hire former George Santos staffers. I mean, if you're willing to work for George Santos, a.k.a. Anthony DeVolder, a.k.a. Katara Ravash, then, I mean, you're, you're pretty much trying to, you know, you can't get anywhere else, right? You're, you're going to get your foot on the door uh, or in the door by choosing the door lowest to the ground. Right, that, that's this. This is not just ground level. This is sub basement level. Okay, you got to take an elevator down to go and work for George Santos, and now apparently Nancy Mace. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I mean, does she take people higher, higher off the street? Is that might be, might be. Uh, now, there's one specific incident that I had actually led to 
a lot of this, you know, this, this mass resignation, okay? And it involved the Capitol Police being called on the former chief of staff, who was not even, nobody even knew if he was in the building at that point in time the call was made. But he was there that day to turn in his keys, okay? So now, it, it started terribly, <laughs> okay? The new chief of staff, decided to send the staff home early. Okay, well, not all of them did. Most of them did. Uh, but, you know, a few of them stayed. And uh, Politico reported that when she had found out that not all the staff had left, she was absolutely furious. Now, she also found out that Hanlon had been in the office earlier that day to drop off key, key, uh, the keys. Now, I, nobody knows why they were called, okay? Uh Maybe it was over the popcorn machine that Hamlin owned. <laughs> I don't know. But many former employees were disturbed by the fact that Capitol Police were even there to begin with. So, look, here's one of them. Quote, at that moment, I felt the most unsafe I ever had in the Hill when I realized she was using the Capitol Police to intimidate staff. Now, this entire incident was talked about all over the office, okay, and left many staffers feeling rattled and very, very uncomfortable. And many of them decided at that moment, it's time to go. Like, we're going to get out of here. <laughs> all right, we're, we're, we're done here. All right. This has gotten too crazy. This is stupid. I already hate the working conditions here. I I'm done. F you, I quit. All right. Interesting. <laughs> Now, here's the other thing. I understand that there's staff turnover. People are going to leave, and they're not always going to leave on good terms. I understand that, and this is what we see in a lot of other offices, right? But with Nancy Mace, the numbers suggest that, there's, that this is more than just employee churn, okay? In fact, Professor Casey Burgett, the Legislative Affairs Program Director at George Washington University, told the Daily Beast, that the disproportionately high turnover signal uh, signals that staff are incredibly unhappy working for Mace. Look, he said it's in a ridiculously high number, just out of the ordinary. This person, by the way, studied congressional staff turnover patterns and has testified before Congress on some of his findings. And so a little bit of an expert in the field. In fact, he said, I would be shocked if you found any other representative or senator with even close to that high of a turnover in such a short amount of time. And that's because she's a terrible boss. And mistreats her employees, doesn't offer them incentives, doesn't do anything to help them, and treats them like objects. What do you think is going to happen when you treat people that terribly and expect them to stay? You're not cultivating any loyalty, and you're, not def you're definitely not helping them you know, stay loyal to you and, 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 and be happy at all. You've got to treat your employees better. Okay. I, I know, but it gets to what, how she really feels about working people. They're disposable. They're disposable. They're essentially wage slaves to her, not really people uh, that are only there in order to lift her up. And it's that ideology. You're there to serve me. You serve me. So why aren't you doing the things that are necessary for me to get more attention? Why am I not on TV more? Why am I not doing this? Why aren't you doing that to help me? It's all about me. Do you forget who you're working for? It would be hard not to remember who you're working for. Uh, working for that kind of person. In fact, you would want to, every day you're done, find ways to forget about who you're working for, <laughs> whether it be going to the bar or any other activity you could think of to try to erase that memory. Um, but here's the thing. Getting back to who she is, right? Nancy Mays doesn't seem like she's interested in actually doing her job, representing the people of her district. What she's about, in my opinion, is using Congress, this job as a stepping stone, 
for something that maybe pays more and gives her the attention she so desperately craves, as well as control over other people. And the only thing that I could think of that could meet that requirement is a job in right-wing media. But it wouldn't be piddly right-wing media. It had to be something big like Fox News.